Hello, this is an attempt at a regular video blog. Hello, what is it that is up? So I thought I'd make a general sort of regular blog video. I've got lots of projects on my website, xrobots.co.uk, which get updated regularly. Um, there's pictures and words on the website, and there's also um, basically loads and loads of YouTube videos. I think I've got about 65 videos up, which are basically updates for the projects as I build them and as I go along. Um, however, this video is just a load of stupid nonsense. Yeah, so actually it's not that much nonsense. It's basically going to be previews and it's going to be stuff that doesn't fit into other videos. So, what well, this is my Iron Man suit. It's, it is life-size. Um, this isn't the video to find out information about it though. There's over three hours of video in a YouTube playlist called the Iron Man Build Playlist that tells you all about this suit. And I've got some more pieces here, the thighs and the shins and various other bits and pieces as a hand plate. Um, basically this is on a, a strapping system, my exoskeleton strapping system and all the pieces fit on, fits on with latches. So let's just take some more pieces off. They're all held on with magnetic plugs and sockets. Um, there's another playlist just for the strapping system which is so far incomplete. Um, but basically if you want to find out how I made this there is another playlist and there's another article on my website within the Iron Man build project. So basically what I wanted to talk about today were the things that I'm going to do once I've actually finished putting all the pieces together. So here are the shins in their current state, there will be another video on that. Um, and the thighs, uh, sorry those were the thighs and these are the shins which have removable sections. So basically, there's a big blank plate here, which obviously goes behind the chest piece when it's there. So you may remember my dollar store arc reactor build, which is this, which um, I made from items out of the pound shop. So it's made of a garden solar light, a sink strainer, a thing that was holding pins, um, also used some electronic components and Julian line sockets. And the, the ring around there that's lit up is actually the rim from plastic cups. So there's another video in my channel which has the entire build on that and an article on the website. My basic plan was that since I've made this um, armour with all the removable layers and sections and metalwork underneath, it would be quite good to go and make an arc reactor that fits in underneath and shows through the chest hole. This one, however, is too deep. So the basic plan is to make another one just specially for this, which um, is detachable and fixes on with magnets. Tony Stark was able to make this in a cave with a box of scraps. It's the wrong voice, wasn't it? Tony Stark was able to make this in a cave with a box of scraps. The plan for after that is then to have another panel, probably of EL electroluminescent sheet which then does actually show through the hole in the chest and have all of these sections removable. So um, the, uh, the ultimate aim for, ha for this suit is to have a machine that puts all the pieces on, which as you can see I've just done there, it's very easy. So uh, building the mechanical assembly to place the pieces should be fairly trivial once all of the pieces are attached with the latching system that I've come up with. So I went shopping today and bought some items. Here they are. First of all, I'm just gonna quickly uh, show you one of Iron Man's shins. So I mentioned these pieces come off. Um, these pieces also flip up and there's a boot and a strapping system and there's a cage that opens so you can get your leg in. Uh, basically there's one of these magnetic catches at the top which is a plug and socket with a magnet in that are cone shaped so they locate really easily. At the bottom, let's just zoom in, let's have a closer look. There is a piece of plastic which is HDPE which came out of, uh, well basically it's all the plastic that's used in a chopping board and there's a corresponding piece in here um, which you can possibly just see just here which has two holes in the bottom which I clumsily drilled with a drill press and uh, basically that's how it locks together in the bottom which is what keeps the bottom in 
So I now have some other pieces to do, such as the thighs, um, but I wanted to find a better solution for pieces latching together. Sometimes that's quite hard to plug in, um, and also it's not that accurate as you can see. Um, there's a bit of play in it, so it'd be good to replicate that perhaps at the sides, um, which is basically how the shins are working, so that um, the fronts and backs don't wobble around. So let's see what we've got on the table. So I went to a DIY store, there's Wix in the UK. Um, these are traditionally known as modesty blocks. They are basically the blocks that you build self-assembly furniture with. They have one hole this way and they have two holes this way. And they're all identical, which means that the holes align perfectly, obviously, which is really good. So what I probably should have done with that arrangement was probably use these. Um, and also found these wooden dowels, which are also used in self-assembly furniture. They're slightly too big for the holes, but all you'd have to do is, is drill the holes out and um, um, push fit them or glue them in and then drill out the corresponding part. And then what you would have is effectively a much more accurate ready-made solution um, for bits that plug together. So these will probably make an appearance in the thighs of the armour and probably other pieces which are required to locate together in multiple places. Um, where the armour splits so that the machine can put it onto the strapping system. I've also got some other things which I'll show you now. So I have another thing here called a double ball catch, which is for kitchen cupboards. If we just take that apart, it has two ball bearings which are sprung, and another piece which fits in there. Ugh. They're quite tight. Um, obviously if they're on a cupboard that's being moved together it's not so bad and that latches in the middle so that'll be quite useful for something perhaps that's placed manually um, and needs to hold in place quite well and the other things I bought were the double roller catches which are these let's just have a look at one of those which is basically Another thing for kitchen cupboards, but quite a good latch. So basically it's got two uh, rollers that are sprung together and a thing that pops in the middle. It will come out sideways, um, but obviously if you put a plate on there or on either side, or if it was screwed flat onto something and you had a plate on the front, then that wouldn't move sideways. So I'm actually really considering using these to hold the thighs on um, so they'll probably make an appearance in the next Iron Man update video, which um, is in fact going to be that video. And most of the metal work as I showed you a moment ago is done. So I've got a pack of ten of these and I think that I need six of them. While I was shopping I found this coverall suit, which was only $1.99. Um, apparently there isn't supposed to be a roller included. Um, mine didn't have one and apparently that's correct. So uh, that's going to be really useful for fiberglassing, for doing my boat project and um, any further fiberglass pieces of props and costumes. I do wear old clothes, um, but it's still quite good to just be able to take something off and leave it in the shed um, if you get covered in fiberglass resin. So a few people have asked about my hands. Uh, well, not my hands, but Iron Man's hands. Um, they ask, have you had any ideas for Iron Man's hands? Um, so I'm going to tell you what my ideas are for Iron Man's hands. So far I have a hand plate or two, which um, needs some work doing on. It should have a thing cut out where the thing's jointed. Um, so that's it really. So yeah, you could just use gloves or something, but obviously what I want is the machine to put all the pieces on. So they've got to be detachable. So um, what I think I'll do is take the same approach as to the rest of the suit where I'll have a kind of metal frame on my hand um, that you put on first as you do with the rest of the exoskeleton and then the bits of the hand clip onto it. So um, I think it's going to be something that's got a bit of a back on it and a bit of a front and possibly a ridge over the knuckles although it has to be flexible. Um, the, uh, 
The repulsor light thing will be one of these lights which will be mounted but obviously the LEDs taken out not the whole thing and then I think what I have is um, some sort of latching system as described which latches a palm on um, the back of the hand I'm not sure it might remain metal and I have some wires and circuits and mechanical looking things on so obviously that's covered anyway with the hand plate but then I think with the fingers, they're going to go on individually or as a set of four and a thumb and they'll just kind of lock in on the knuckles um, with magnets to the back plate. So um, it's going to be quite detailed. Um, it's going to have rigid sections. Probably um, the fingers will have rubber bits joining them. Haven't really thought it through properly, but it's something like that. So this um, is another strapping system which I made, which I'm going to show you, which um, was um, the one for the Iron Man suit, but that now has its own metal strapping system as I've explained. So I just wanted to go over this one basically because um, I spent quite a lot of time making it. Um, it's probably going to be used for another suit, maybe even another Iron Man suit. I'm just going to talk about it. So um, the whole thing it's made out of uh, plastazote foam, the same thing I built my foam Iron Man suit from. Um, the, the idea is similar to the strapping system I've got now, where basically you put it on and then the pieces latch onto it. Um, this is actually made, uh, the brown stuff here is actually Maplex board, which is like a woven sort of woody cardboard stuff that's really tough, but you can't tear it, although you can crease it. It sticks really well with hot glue. And all these wire bits are actually wire coat hanger wire cut up. So um, we've got a belt buckle, as you'd expect there. Various other adjusters, and the arms also have a latch so that you can put them on, and then you can hook on the biceps. And there's also hooks here for shoulder bells. Back is a similar thing without the latches that crosses over. Um, everything is adjustable. Um, the main thing that I should point out is on each hip, there's a kind of hip pod. Um, and that's basically where there would be a belt that drops down to hold the thighs. Now in lots of armour people just extend these pieces so they go down to each thigh and essentially the legs are held on over the shoulders. The problem you've got with that is that when you take a step um, and you end up stretching the back strap around your bum and basically trying to uh, which basically restricts the movement of the thigh armour. So let me just grab one of these thighs, in fact. So if you can imagine this wearing one of these Iron Man thighs, and then a strap running all the way down the back here to this thigh, obviously as you took a step then that's going to restrict your movement, so the strap would essentially have to slide over the shoulder, um, and the same uh, to the front, so it's really hard to walk upstairs and things like that. So the basic plan for this and the other metal strapping system is to have a single strap that comes down the side and that moves with your leg as you move it and it's not restricted with the strap at the back in, uh, back in front of your body. Right, that's all I've got for this episode of Random Blog Stuff. Next time I will be talking about unfinished projects and my plans to finish them, which include this and the continuation of this. If you want to discuss anything that uh, you've seen in this video, the best place is at xrobots.co.uk slash forums, where I can post links in response and pictures which I can't do in YouTube comments. There's also, as I said, tons of information on the website and um, in the YouTube channel, so probably worth a look before asking a question. See you next time. Goodbye.